Welcome back to the channel, y'all. It's time to go run our jugs that we've made. Now, I just got home this morning from the Northeast and I'm whooped, but I got home, I, my oil filter came in, I changed it on the Merc, we filled it up, and now I, I just wanna go see how the motor's performing. I'm sure a lot of you guys do, do too. See how it is working on the new improvements that we made with the jack plate. Uh, and everything else with the boat. So we're gonna head to the lake, get our bait, make sure the motor is running correctly, and then we will go back and do our little milk run of jug lines and hopefully come up with a bunch of catfish. All right, we're lifted up about six inches. Take our straps off. Okay, big moment right here. Will she crank? Yes, she will. Get that oil pumping. All right, my new um, tachometer. It's reading RPMs. My big problem has been oil or gas generating into the oil. So fresh oil in here, we're gonna really find out if we got a problem with the, uh, the fuel pump or not. All right, all, all good so far. Got her kill switch hooked up. Let's see if she's gonna run, run all right. Trim her down. Getting up good. Oh. We're definitely not getting that spray that we were before. Well, tachometer's working. 0.3 hours on the motor. The thing that is not working is the position of the motor. It's actually too high, guys. I'm porpoising, which means the bow of the boat just wants to keep going up the more throttle that I give it. So I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm going to have to take this piece of wood out, the spacer. I'm going to have to drop the motor down. Definitely have a hole in the side of the boat over here as well. I gotta fix that. All this porpoising isn't gonna help with the welding. Nice cool down. Googan squad boat shorts. Good for getting in and for the dangle. Use my promo code LFG, save 10% at checkout. Got us some gills. All nice. Those are gonna be our bait for tomorrow. I'm really concerned about the gasoline getting into the oil. Major concern, right? So we're gonna pop this off, check the old dipstick, and just see if we have any gas in there. You can usually smell it. Or it's just gonna be spewing out. Okay, we did not spew out. Still looking very thick. Viscosity, that's good. All right, so I don't think we're getting any gas in our oil right now, but we'll see over time. Well, we got it down on the base of the jack plate. It looks pretty good right now. So hopefully in the morning, it's gonna run nice. We got bluegill for bait. Uh, we've made up plenty of jugs. So we're gonna get out in the, in the morning and go set a milk run of jugs, run it, and hopefully come back with a bunch of catfish. So I will see you guys merc running 
in the morning and we will get on pad and go catch some cats. Got our gills that's three gills right there chop the tails off and then just put them in like little half inch cuts so we're gonna put these on the jugs Everything's operating pretty well with the jug so far. One thing that I did exchange from the tutorial video where I was showing you guys how to build these is I put six ounce weights on the ones that I'm throwing out deep. Six ounces will just hold a little better as well, keep them from drifting. Something I also did is I increased the hook size to five aught instead of four aught. These bigger chunks like this just want a bigger gap in the hook to be able to hook the fish bombs away. Nice, very nice. The depth that I put these at, that I just did up in the garage is perfect. They're going right to the bottom and just have a few inches or they're just floating and will probably drift and hit the bottom. So we got about 10 lines set right now. I've got three shallows and the rest are deep. I just set the rest of the shallows out and I'm going to hang on to two more shallows and probably put them over where we're about to go, which is the first spot that we laid the jugs. So it's been probably 30 minutes. Let's run back over to our first hole and see if we got anything on our jugs. By the way, I'm going to have to lower this jack plate again. It's too high. I'm just barely porpoising when I get, you know, over mid speed. It sucks, but I got I got to unbolt this and lower the entire jack plate, which means I'm going to have to take the motor off. Be a fun little project. I definitely see a jug that has either drifted a long way or a fish has tugged it you know, about 40 yards from where it was. Just sit here for a minute and see if we see any bobbing action. Ooh, I see that other one going out there too. All right, I see it kind of tipping a little bit. That has got a fish, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely moving. All right, let's see what we get on here. channel cat we'll throw them in the box 
This one looks like it's getting bit. I just saw it bob up and down. Just like a strike. I don't think a fish is on there yet, but we're definitely getting bit right now. Come on, kitty cat. This is this seems quite a ways away from where I put it. is getting tugged good oh baby oh yeah she bobbing good oh ho. might have a good one on here oh boys look at this thing oh my gosh oh my gosh look at it go this is a big one this is a big one it's running away from me That's a good one there. He's up to this guy. It's fresh, it's hide hard. Oh gosh, it feels big. It feels big already, guys. This one feels big. Feels like a giant. Like barely moving the line. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a, oh my God, I have a giant turtle. I have a giant turtle and a catfish. Oh my gosh, this giant turtle. It's a giant snapping, or it's a giant soft shell turtle and there's a catfish on. Holy, holy, holy. Oh my gosh, guys, look at the size of this turtle. And there's a blue cat on. Look at the size of that turtle. Holy cow, I've never seen anything like that. Doubled up, turtle cat mode. Woo, baby. I'm not so sure about throwing that turtle in the boat. I'm gonna try to unplug him right now. I'll do something felt absolutely crazy with that. Oh my gosh, his claws are insane. I'm trying not to get them in my in my hand. <sighs> okay, turtle's gone. Turtle's gone, blue cat in the boat. Holy cow. <laughs> That's some fun jugging right there. Woo! I was like, I've either got a giant flathead or something is going on that's wild and that was definitely wild this poor guy this poor guy was just getting tossed around by that turtle I don't know how big that turtle was 30 pounds it's huge it's the biggest soft shell I've ever seen in my life fantastic eating blue catfish right here so this seems to be a good spot I will rebate that line and throw it back out and um, I haven't even looked at the other jugs yet. That one was the most obvious, but we'll keep our eyes on these other ones, see if we got anything on too. It's gonna be great eating right there. Woo! That gone. That was fun. That one is definitely getting nibbled right now. It's either that or a turtle. Another turtle is uh, just trying to steal the bait. It's getting tapped. This one over here looks pretty stagnant. 
I don't think there's anything on it. The bluegill has really tough skin and I think it'll stay on the hook well. I've actually used it to throw back out. So we might get some more fish on the same bait. And you know what, y'all? If that jug with that little toggle in there with the, the marline spike hitch, the marlin spike hitch, if that holds on, on a blue cat and a giant soft shell, shell turtle tugging that thing down, I think it'll hold on a really big fish. And just 30 pound mono and not huge bank line. So these aren't overkill jugs and I think they'll hold up on some big ones. That give me, gives me some confidence going to some bigger bodies of water and trying to get some Mondo blue cats. Look at that hook though, guys. That thing is bent. I can't tell if it's an optical illusion, but I swear I just saw this other one move too. The far one got bopped and was definitely moving and might be moving right now. The boat's kind of moving too, so it's hard to tell. Boys, we got another one. This far one's definitely bobbing. I'm not convinced that this one's empty either. Just, it just has me on edge, man. It's jug fishing. When it's fast and furious like this, it's so much fun. Oh, oh yeah, this, this, this buoy's like moving away from me. It's not bobbing, but it was definitely moving away from me. Let's see what we got here. Something fighting. It's small. Nothing like the last fish. Blue cat, baby! It's actually not small. Good size eater. Kind of a skinny one. That one's going in the box. Woo, boy! This cooler's getting full now. Oh, this one's going. This one's going right here. The other one I thought had a fish on it, but couldn't tell. It's got a fish. Oh, this has got to be a turtle. It feels huge. Nope, it's a blue cat. It's a blue cat and it's caught in the tail. Blue cat, baby! I don't know how the heck it got hooked like that, but it might have unhooked itself, rehooked itself. It's in the boat, that's what's mad what matters. Man, this is a big blue cat area right here. Fishing freaks. Mama's gonna be happy. Y'all, we are raking them in. We already have enough. My cooler is, is full, but we still have jug lines out at a fresh spot that I haven't checked. I don't have great confidence in because I kind of threw those shallow and I, I felt like it was more of a deep spot. All these that I've caught fish on so far are deep lines, so they're going about 15 to 18 foot is kind of what I measured out. Uh, out of bait, and I'm just gonna go ahead, uh, I'm not even gonna put the chicken livers on this. I'm gonna just reel this in and store it. If you missed the video of me making these, uh, I'll link it here, you can watch it, and you can see how to build these. But one of the nice things about it is they just store very easily, so I've purposely put cuts in the side of this and when I wrap these up they deploy very nicely and they store very nicely I've got them in a milk crate so we got a six ounce weight right here and I'm just gonna stuff it in the hole let it slide into one of the cracks that I've cut make sure our toggle is, is in our little crack there it's good to go. Might have movement. Might have movement here. Yeah, not a sniff on the shallow ones. Might actually go throw those out real quick to the other spot. 
Bye. crazy happened and my mono broke it broke below the second hook i think we had something really big on could have been a turtle but the bottom section just broke off and the the, uh, the weight was gone you know everything was gone except for the top hook it looks like a pretty clean snap too so there's the top hook I mean, it, it looks just like cut, but it could have been right above the knot and just had a ton of pressure. Channel. He's small. We'll let him go. little channel cat ate one piece of bluegill went to the other one and had both hooks in its mouth that's crazy that's why I do the double hooks in case they miss one or one comes off they might go after the other this this guy's just small we're gonna throw him back oh, last few of it's small I'm missing a jug I'm missing a jug it's somewhere around here Topping it off. Can't even shut the cooler. That's actually a, a channel, I believe. So we got a channel and a blue on the same line. We're topped off. That's all I can fit in there, y'all. Wow. I hope we have more on the other lines, but man, the, the cooler's full. Like, we'll, we'll have to use the bucket if we get any more. Not seeing any movement on the old shallow jugs. Oh, I feel one. I feel one on there. Definitely have a fish on here. Oh, it came off. What the heck? It felt small. It felt like a white bass or something. So we actually had two jugs go missing. I reverted back to the first spot. I knew I had a white jug. It was like one of the ones I didn't make. And it is so far away from where I put it going into the wind. So I, there's got to be a fish on here.
Yeah, I put it like way out there. I'm gonna guess there's a little turtle. Turtle that just got buried on the bottom. soft shell going back in I would cook these but I have no idea how to he's gonna get a little snappy with those claws I can feel it Let's see you buddy Good haul today with the jugs, guys. I'm pleased with them. We had some mystery escapees. I don't know. They could have been true lunkers, could have been turtles. I don't know. They just they dragged my stuff down. And I didn't I didn't see one of them um, until probably 30 minutes later when I went back and checked again. And then the other one I I have no idea. Could have gotten dragged under and then got stuck, kind of like the other one, just underwater. Those huge turtles are very powerful so it's possible but they held up pretty well I got some re-rigging to do on a few of the leaders uh, the drop rigs but everything's good I'm happy with it and they're cheap so even if I did lose a couple it's not too hard to replace let's take a closer look at our haul from today so I'm gonna let these fish ice down for uh, about 12 hours before I clean them Channel cat, number one. Blue cat for number two. Amazing. He's got a weird circle on his side. Could have been from that turtle. Another tasty blue cat right there. Little channel, that's four. I believe that is a blue, and that is five. Another blue for six. Great size eating fish. Little channel, I believe this is one of the first one. First ones, that's seven. And then number eight with another channel cat. Great haul right there. So I'll put these in a bigger cooler with some ice. Let them get frosty. Now, unfortunately, there's still work to be done with the mini Merc. We gotta lower this jack plate. I can't believe that we weren't getting enough traction to, I mean, it looked good. It looked good where it was sitting, but uh, I guess it's gotta go an inch loader lower. So luckily I, I've already got the holes drilled. But that'll be my rest of the afternoon project. Crispy Collector, I'm proud of you. You did your job today. We'll get you running right and we'll get back out there and catch some more. And thank you all for hanging with me on the water today. Again, if you want to go check out how I made those jugs, uh, there'll be a video link down below, or you can click on it up here and go see how they're made and maybe try them on your home waters. Uh, what I will say is the floaters, I would not do those unless you're in like a shallow cove or going into a river. A river system would be great for the floaters. Well, on the lake today, I just thought I would try it, um, and some of them got away from me. Uh, it's it's nice to have that weight on the bottom 
Um, the, the fish is dragging against that and also just a little bit of wind will keep it from drifting. If you're staying close to them, that's one thing, but I was running a, a milk run essentially at different locations, you know, waiting about 20 minutes or so and coming back and a couple of them drifted off and I had trouble finding them. So just uh, take that for what it's worth. Thank you guys for being here. Smash that like button if you want to check out any of the summer apparel at GuggenSquad.com. Links down below, and you can also save 10% at checkout using my promo code LFG. And I will see you guys on the next outdoor adventure.